Hi, welcome to this session on working with PDF and Office documents using VCL and FireMonkey. My name is Girish Patil and I'm the founder of Nostis Information Technologies. And I'm assisted by our senior engineer, Ramnish, who has helped me behind the scenes set up this demo. And today we're going to see the advancements in the Nostis tools for working with PDF and Office documents since the last code rage. And here's the agenda for this session. To maintain continuity and give a summary of the technology to new users or new developers who are seeing this for the first time, we will start with a big picture of the technology and then we will go into detailed demos of using the products on VCL, FireMonkey and the new server-based solution for document processing. And then we will close with general information and Q&A. And just a note about this presentation is that there are common parts to it for both the object Pascal and C++ tracks. I've shown both the object Pascal and C++ code at the same time as the code is really simple to understand and where we need to go a bit deeper into code each track will see its own separate example. Nostis has been in the business of providing tools and components for working with electronic documents for about 12 years now. Ever since we created our first products, eDoc Engine and PDF Toolkit, we have felt the need to have a single product to work with documents. And that's how this one product vision got defined. It, it was not just about putting all our products together. It is about providing a single library for working with electronic documents to perform all kinds of operations with electronic documents and to have support for more and more formats as we go along. And also where the developer does not worry about what class to use for a given format or what component to use for a given format. They would just focus on what they need to get done with documents. This is the name of the product, Xtreme Document Studio. And the graphic represents some of the main functions, create, view, print, convert, edit documents of various formats. Now let's see a demo of some of the capabilities of Xtreme Document Studio for VCL. Let's start with an overview of the components. So these are the four components that come with Xteam Document Studio for VCL currently. The Document Viewer, the Document Printer, Converter, and the DBE Document Viewer. And I have laid them out here to inspect their properties and methods. So the difference between the Document Viewer and the DB Document Viewer is that the DB document viewer comes with two additional properties, data source and data field. So we can connect the DB document viewer to a database blob field and it will automatically show the document stored in that blob field. Xtreme Document Studio also has standard actions. So you can program the user interface without having to write any code. And let's look at the methods. So if you have to write some code or if you need to write some code, it also provides the methods 
or the APIs to do that. So you have, for example, the load document or load from file and load from stream, and you have the other methods to navigate the document and change the rotation of pages, zoom the pages, and so on. Likewise, for the document printer, there is the print document method, which takes in the document and does the printing. And also, the document converter has a few methods, and it also allows for taking in multiple documents and converting them to a single document. And the events. So here's an example of uh, one of the events, the document converter begin job event. So we took a decision to design all the events in a specific way, and that was to have just two parameters for the event. One was, of course, the standard sender parameter, and the other was of a class type that would get in all the information into the event that we needed to send to it. So for example, here, this event args parameter has a property job info that gives us all the information about the state of the converter at that particular event. So this design allows us to enhance the product without breaking user code. So for example, if we needed to send some new information into this event, we could just add a property and user code would just work as it did before the change. And we have the same thing for C++. So the same set of components and the actions as well and the code as well, the same set of methods and events. Let's switch to the full-fledged viewer demo I have set up and inspect it before we run it. Okay, so this is the viewer demo. It uses the document viewer and uses the document viewer standard actions to set up the viewer's toolbar. And we also have a file browser set up to easily select the files we want to view. And there's just a bit of code in this project. And these lines here are to load the file selected in the file browser. Let's run it and see how it works. So first I will expand all nodes of the tree view. We select docx file, different types of them with images, with different kinds of columns, and then images, different types, and then PDF files, again different fonts, some with a few pages, and a password protected document, and then a PDF with bookmarks, and another PDF with some images in it. All of the controls that you would find in a normal viewer are there. So to zoom and then to navigate through the pages 
and rotate pages and all of this functionality on all the formats that the viewer supports. So whatever we saw on the PDF also works on the docx file. Okay, let's keep this here. And before we open the report file, let's understand a bit about the architecture of the product. This is the architectural overview of the different modules and different layers in the Extreme Document Studio product. So at the base over the Delphi runtime library is the core module, which contains the basic framework and all the underlying engines. And above that are the document processing engines. And above that are the visual controls, one set for VCL and another set for FireMonkey. And if we need to incorporate support for a new format, we would plug it in into the document engines layer. And automatically we get viewing, printing, and converting support for that format. And this is how we support a custom format. So first, we descend our new engine class from the base class for all document engines, which is the TGT document class. Implement a few methods like loading from file, loading from stream, and then this new engine class has to support the get page count and get page methods. And in the get page method, we need to return the actual page class, which is a descendant of the page class within Extreme Document Studio. And in the page class, when the document or the framework calls on the documents page to be drawn, the draw method of the page class needs to draw the page of the format that it is going to support onto the supplied canvas. And finally, we register the new document engine with the framework using the register document method. And in this case, we've implemented a handler for the fast report report files, and we have registered it into the framework with the file extension that the fast report report file has. So let's switch back a bit to code and see where actually we have done this. So this is the actual fast report report file handler. What I explained is done here. Although we have derived from a class descended from the TGT document class and also the page class and about the draw method. This is where the actual drawing takes place. So we use fast reports capability to draw its report pages onto a canvas and draw the report page onto the supplied canvas and then register the new engine into the framework. So after doing that, this same viewer without any further modifications is able to view fast report report files with all the capabilities that the viewer had for the other formats. To complete this overview of the VCL components, let me quickly show you the document printer and the document converter. So this is the document printer demo. I won't run it, but you can see that it has all the capabilities that you would expect from a printer component. And it supports printing of all the formats that we just saw with the viewer. Let's move on to the document converter. The document converter is a really powerful component. And with just one method call, you can convert a list of documents to the chosen format, either as one single file or as separate output files based on the choice you make. Let's quickly run this and convert a few documents. 
So I'm going to select a bunch of docx files and say convert them to a single PDF file or merge them. And let's it's converted and you can see the whole list of docx files we selected converted and merged into a single PDF file. And it's all text and not just the whole page saved as an image. I'd just like to point out that everything we saw until now is available for both Object Pascal and C++. Okay, that was all good and that was all VCL. Also, many of you may have seen this before, but what's new? And that's what we will focus on for the rest of the presentation. We now have the long-awaited native FireMonkey document viewer. And currently it supports Windows, Mac, and iOS. The formats it supports are PDF and the image file formats. Let's straight away jump into the demo by switching to the C++ IDE. So first, let's inspect the project and see how it's built. We have put the user interface controls on a frame and shared it between the C++ project and the Object Pascal project. But all the code to do with the Extreme Document Studio components is all written in C++ separately and in Object Pascal separately. The master view of the main form contains the main components, the document viewer, the toolbar, and the toolbar buttons. The toolbar buttons are programmed using the document viewer APIs. And the FireMonkey document viewer exposes similar API as the VCL document viewer. And then for the OS X version of the form, there's a separate view and also for Windows. Let's run the OS X version first and see how the viewer performs. So while it compiles and deploys the executable, let me explain a bit about my hardware setup. My main machine for this presentation is a Mac. I have a separate physical Windows PC where my Delphi IDE is running and I'm connecting to the Windows PC over remote desktop from the Mac on my local network. The IDE is set up to deploy to the Mac over the local network. It's a bit roundabout but it seems to work better as the Windows OS is sitting directly on a full powered machine. Okay, it's time to run and load some documents in the FireMonkey viewer. So support for different kinds of fonts and loading documents with images and multiple pages. and another one of the same type. And let's also load some images now. So all the images that were supported in the VCL version are also supported with the FireMonkey version. Let's also quickly run this demo on Windows. So 
So it does work on Windows as well. So FileMonkey was a big project for us and I think we made a good start to it. We'll keep improving both the VCL and FireMonkey versions of the components and have support for more and more formats in both and as far as possible we'll keep the functionality and the interface similar in both. Okay, let's go back and see what else we have. Our Delphi team is busy developing native embeddable VCL and FireMonkey components for document processing. We're going to continue to do that. While that has been going on, another team at our company, actually our Java team, has been busy developing a server-based solution for document processing. This server also offers us REST-based API for document processing. And we see that a lot of advantages are there to moving your document processing tasks to a server, especially if you are already running a server-based application and serving a lot of mobile users. Here are some of the advantages. Document processing is usually a heavy lifting operation. So it may be better to move it to a powerful server to ensure consistent performance of your applications for all users. And you don't have to worry about supporting different devices and different formats you can just support any device today and the formats that the server supports across every device. And since you can interact with the server using standard REST-based APIs, you can just get your work done without any interoperability issues. This new product from Nostis is called Stardocs. It provides REST APIs for document processing and storage operations. In simple visual terms, these are the APIs that the server currently supports. Merge, split, convert, secure, and redact text. So this web app is also part of the product so end users in your organization can actually use it directly. It also comes with an administrative console to set up users who can manage and monitor the system. And you can also provision keys for new applications that will use the REST-based APIs. And also, it gives a way to manage and monitor the performance of the system. Lastly, how do we get it set up? It comes as a nicely packaged virtual appliance that you can simply mount onto your virtualization platform. So you start up the appliance, get the IP address or map the IP address to a name so that users don't have to worry about changing IPs and we are ready to get started using the server. It's a complete solution for server-side document processing and I feel our team has really done a neat job of it. And here's a look at the underlying architecture of the product. To start with, all requests to the server come through REST APIs. Even the web application that we just saw uses REST APIs to get its work done. First, all calls land at the public facing load balancer and requests are passed on to the API request server. 
request then go through some validation checks for app key and limits and so on. Then they get picked up by the API provider, which actually performs the document operations. Then as the job is being performed, clients poll for job status. Once the client gets a done status code, client makes a download call and gets hold of the document and goes on with whatever they want to do next. And so it goes on. We saw the list of APIs already in the app, and there are just a few more additional APIs to check integrity and get and set document properties. And I promise you, we are getting to the main part of the story, and it is going to get really interesting. Okay, so we actually don't have to worry about making REST calls to use Stardocs. We actually have a native Delphi component that wraps all the REST processing and gives us a clean set of methods so we can program in the way we are used to as Delphi programmers. And it turns out that the currently available APIs in Stardocs are quite powerful and enough to develop a multi-format, multi-device document viewer and also implement parts of a document workflow. And that's what we're going to see. The Stardocs SDK is not available for C++ at this point, but will be in the next few days. So we will see these demos in object Pascal. So let's switch to the IDE and first let's have a quick overview of the APIs of the SDK. Let's get some of these out of our way. Here's an app that uses the Stardocs SDK. And this is the general flow of how you would use the SDK. First, you would instantiate the SDK object, then set the connection properties, and then use the document processing APIs to perform the document operations or use the storage APIs to perform upload and download tasks. And you can see that the APIs are categorized under storage and under document operations. So it's also easy to find them and use them. So once the operations are done, you would make a download call to get the final document. So what we'll see now is a mobile viewer in fact, an Android multi-format document viewer implemented using Stardocs and Xteam Document Studio. So at the beginning, we saw that in Xteam Document Studio, we could implement new document handlers by descending from the base document handler and it and register that new document handler into the system so that the system could use that document handler for handling those document formats. What we have done is just that. We have written a new handler that uses the REST server, the Stardocs REST server, and we have used it to load the supplied document, get the document converted to images, and then implement the draw method to render the document pages onto the viewer's canvas. So the viewer itself is already cross-platform, that is the FireMonkey viewer. So the engines are, are not completely cross-platform, but with the Starlox implemented engine, it is possible to process documents across any device. And once we have implemented all the necessary methods, we simply register the 
new handler for all the formats that we need to support. So this demo uses the Extreme Document Studio document viewer and the new REST-based document handler to achieve document viewing on a mobile device. And we will deploy this app to an Android device. I have a physical device connected to my PC and we will use this screen sharing software to see what's happening on the device. And the documents that we're going to see in the viewer are stored as resources in the application. Okay, let's deploy this and see how it goes. It's compiling, linking. Let's bring up our screen sharing software. Should be coming up any moment. It's on my device and it's also on this screen. So here are our options. I will click on the PDF button. I see the document. I can use my fingers to scroll through the document. Then let me click on the button for TIFF. It's already come up on my device and it's also there on the screen. I can scroll through the document. It's much, much smoother on the device itself. And now let me click on the docx button. All the document formats that we could view using the VCL and FireMonkey document viewers for Windows, Mac, and iOS now can also be viewed on an Android device. Let's move on to the next demo. The scenario that we need to imagine to understand the next demo is this. A manager in an organization needs to review a set of documents that need to be sent out to a customer and mark which ones in the set of documents can actually be sent out. And if any sensitive information of third parties such as emails and phone numbers need to be removed from the documents. And that's what this demo implements. It uses the FireMonkey document viewer and the REST-based document handler. It also uses some APIs of the Stardocs SDK to achieve all this. Once the reviewer decides what documents need to be sent out and if any sensitive information needs to be removed, this code executes. So first, the Stardocs SDK object is created and initialized. Then all selected documents are uploaded to the Stardoc server. Then they're converted and merged into a single PDF file. And if the reviewer chose to remove sensitive information, such as the phone numbers and emails, the pattern for phone numbers and emails is constructed. And finally, the redact text function is called on the Stardocs SDK to remove the sensitive information. And after all those operations, the final document is downloaded to be shown in the viewer again. And the sample documents that are shown in the application are stored as resources in the application. We will deploy this app to the iOS simulator. Let's run it and use it. So let's view a few of the documents first before selecting them. You can see that the viewer 
is able to view all kinds of document formats and you can see that this PDF has a couple of email addresses and a phone number so we will select this one and we will select this docx file as files to be sent out to the customer let's go to the next step okay so I want the phone number and the email IDs to be removed next so the code that we saw is being executed, the documents are uploaded, merged, and then the email addresses and phone numbers are redacted. And we are seeing the final document in the viewer. With that, we are done with the demos we had for this session. I hope it gave you some good ideas for your applications and how you can use the Nostis document processing technology. Let's switch back to the slides now. So as far as the roadmap for Extreme Document Studio is concerned, right now this is what is available. So in VCL we have the view print convert capability for docx, pdf, tiff and other image formats and under FileMonkey, we have viewing capability for PDF and image files on Windows, Mac, and iOS. And coming up next is report export capability in December and more enhancements to the viewer. And going forward, we will be putting in more and more functionality of document processing into both VCL and FireMonkey. And for Stardocs, right now we have the virtual appliance that supports conversion, merging, splitting, redaction, and encryption. And we can use Stardocs in combination with Extreme Document Studio to achieve document viewing on any device at this point. So we will be putting in more and more document processing functions as we move along and also have support for more formats. So, so far only the on-premises edition is available, but we will also be making a cloud hosted version available. So you can just subscribe to the API and pay per use. So all of these components are available as a bundle called Extreme Dev System Delphi. And with this, you get full source. And currently, we are offering a 25% discount on this package. And the only difference in licensing is that Stardocs is licensed per server, and you don't pay anything for development, but you pay when you deploy. Please check out nostis.com slash coderage for more information on the products, the discount, and also to download the source code for the demos shown here. Thank you. Are there source code examples and samples in both Delphi and C++ uh, with, uh, with, the, with your products? Absolutely, yes. Uh, the version that you can download from the website, the the trial download has both C++ and Object Pascal source excellent. for the demos, the examples. Yeah. Uh, ex excellent. Um, let's see, Rob is saying, I understand you can convert multiple input files into sequential pages in the output file. Is it possible to merge multiple source pages from different documents onto one page so we could specific, specify the background in one file and the contents in another file? Um, yes, so, uh, okay, right now, no, uh, but it's in our plan. Um, I answered that actually um, with an example. Um, I don't know, it, it, it's probably only private right now, so maybe that can be made uh, public. Uh, yeah, so uh, we are considering uh, scenarios like um, making a photo album, for example, 
uh, taking in pages or images from different files and then putting them or arranging them into a single document, even multiple pages from, a, from different documents onto a single page of the output document. Yeah, those kind of uh, scenarios we are working on. And, and Girish, I, I know I, I'm just recapping some of the questions that you answered uh, during the presentation in the Q&A, sure, sure. and okay. then we'll we'll catch up okay. to some of the newer ones as well. So so no problem there. Okay. Um, let's see. Can this create a document type? Um, I.e., what if the text? What if I have text data and want to create a Word document or create a PDF document? Mm -hmm. um, so currently, it's. Um, so plain text data is going to be supported very soon, but full-fledged creation of um, docx and PDF files is planned for the, um, I think the second release after our two releases later. Uh, it's going to be after the next release. Okay, and Rob was saying he had gone to your site, he didn't see FMX controls. Uh, how do they get it? How do people get the? Uh, we just released it a few hours ago, so you can see now. Uh, I don't know. Uh, you should refresh your pages. Uh, we have updated it on the history. We haven't announced the release yet, uh, but if you download the trial now, you get um, the FireMonkey components also in them. Okay, great. Um... Let's see. Is everything you demoed with the components in the current shipping version? Um, so the last demo, uh, which which was the um, the review scenario, uh, that's not there, but that's available on the page uh, that I have on this slide. Uh, it can be downloaded. So the rest of it is in the product. Just put it in. Just we just put it. In. Okay, J James asked, um, uh, can you comment on the type of encryption that is used in the communication between the client and the document server? Okay, um, so uh, if you host it uh, by yourself, yes, you can um, have an SSL connection. Um, that's basically what we uh, offer at this point. So we don't do any other encryption. Okay. Um, Does that make sense? Uh, let's see. Uh, we'll, we'll see if James comes back again. Um, does your FMX, uh, Rob's asking, does your FMX tool set support access and filing form data in PDF files? Um, not yet. So that's uh, planned. So we have the base now working and we're going to start putting in all the features um, of interactivity in, in the uh, coming release, coming releases. What about printing on OS 10? Okay, we haven't gone there yet, but yes. Uh, so that's, um, yeah, in our roadmap, I guess we will take that up next. Yeah, it's going to happen one by one. I mean, can't you? You can always generate the PDF, right? You can generate and save the PDF oh. and then print it wherever you want, even from a mobile device, I guess. Sure, you could do that um, and using the using what the OS provides. Uh, but if you want to do it from your application, yes, uh, that's something we will address. Because I know, for example, <laughs> in the mobile apps, we have our share sheet action where depending on the type. I know that's for images right now and bitmaps or something, but mm -hmm. there's things, mm -hmm. but it'll be great to have the printing. Uh, does the viewing include RTF format? Um, yes, RTF is something, uh, so uh, our uh, order of uh, support for formats is, first we want to support the uh, word processing formats. So docx is in, we have to improve it uh, in the sense supporting more of the, uh, uh, the spec. Uh, next, we are going to do uh, the binary doc format, uh, that is the older version, and we are getting to RTF uh, at the same time. Rob was mentioning, bear in mind, the FMX support specifically is, mm -hmm. for, is for viewing, right? Not conversion at the moment, so it may be difficult to print. But you also have libraries for generating PDF formats, right? PDF files. 
or am I confusing uh, yes, the FMX support versus the right. other libraries? Correct. Um, so VCL supports creation uh, in the older library. Uh, the newer library, which incorporates all the functionality, uh, doesn't have creation directly yet. And FMX also doesn't have creation, um, but yes, coming <laughs> soon. James is asking, can you comment on whether RTF viewing is available in the current shipping version? Uh, it's not. Um, it's something we'll uh, do, I think, in the next three, four months. Go to the Nostis uh, site. There's a, in the virtual exhibit hall and go to their site, of course, and, uh, and you can uh, see all the great things that they're doing.